early Greek philosophy, philosopher Anaximander. Anaximander was a 6th century pre-Socratic philosopher who hailed from Miletus, a city of Ionia. He belonged to the Ionian school and was a pupil of Thales. Anaximander was an Ionian philosopher. He is one of the three chief thinkers of the Ionian school. The other two chief thinkers are Thales and Anaximenes. The Ionians believe that the primal source of the universe or the fundamental stuff or the arche of the universe is matter. According to Thales, the primal source was water. For Anaximander, the primal stuff was formless, indefinite and infinite matter. Lastly, for Anaximenes, the arche was air. Hence, the three main Ionians were materialists. The Ionians were also known as Miletians. That is because they hailed from a place called Miletus, which was one of the major Ionian city and the inhabitants of the city were called Miletians. Arche Anaximander, like his master Thales, believed that the ultimate principle of the universe is matter. But, unlike his master Thales, he regarded that the ultimate or the fundamental stuff to be a pyron and not water. Water was considered to be the arche according to Thales' philosophy. A pyron is the Greek word which means that which is unlimited, boundless, infinite and indefinite. Etymologically speaking, the word a pyron means without any limitations, boundaries or end. In other words, he believed that the ultimate reality is eternal, formless, characterless and infinite or boundless. It is neither subjected to decay nor destruction. Hence, according to Naximander, everything generates from a pyron and returns back to it. According to him, the formless, infinite, eternal mass is the fundamental stuff of which the world is constituted. In other words, he believed that the formal general principle can account for the particulars but not vice versa. For example, the formless mass can be converted into earthen pitcher, bricks, tiles, etc. But the earthen pitcher, for instance, cannot be converted back into tiles or bricks or any other object for that matter. In order to give rise to bricks or tiles, the earthen pitcher has to be reduced again to the formless mass state. This distinction of the formless mass and the particulars is further explained in detail by the philosophy of Aristotle. Anaximander, unlike the other Ionians, was the first philosopher to understand the term arche in a different way. According to the two Ionians, Thales and Anaximenes, the term arche means the source of beginning or the source of origination. On the other hand, according to Anaximander, the term arche means that something which is infinite, eternal, limitless matter. Hence, his arche is called eternal and ageless. According to Anaximander, the world is governed by the opposites. He means that it is due to the opposites like cold and hot, dry and wet, etc. the world is governed. In other words, it is by the way of working of the opposites the world goes on. In this way, it can be said that water, fire or air cannot be considered to be the ultimate stuff of the universe or the arche because if one of them is allowed to work uncontrollably, then the world would either become too hot or too cold or too dry or too watery and in that case the world would cease to be or the world would cease to exist. Cosmology Anaximander was a cosmologist. According to him, Earth was not a flat disk floating on water. Earth being a flat disk floating on water is accepted by Thales' philosophy nor was it spherical in shape. It was, according to Naximander, cylindrical in shape and he believed that men lived on the top of the cylinder. He also believed that earth is cylindrical in shape and it moved freely in space. Hence, it can be said that the theory propounded by him of earth being cylindrical in shape and moving freely in space is a foreshadow of the theory of gravitation. According to Anaximander, the world has evolved in its due course. At one time, according to him, there was only water everywhere 
and there were as a result only water creatures that lived by drying up of water land appeared and the sea creatures were left on the dry land those sea creatures then had to adapt themselves to dry land in order to survive from this theory one can easily see the germ of organic evolution in the philosophy propounded by anaximander hence it can be said that he was a philosopher a scientist and also a cosmologist